This video is about the Velomobile. If you don't know what the Velomobile is, it is kind of like a recumbent bicycle, but with an aerodynamic housing. And uh, if you have been to my shopping page, you see that I have a bicycle section. Unfortunately, I haven't yet had the time to include Velomobiles in it. I have some recumbent references and one Velomobile. This is possibly the most important one. But in any case, I'm going to be updating this page in the coming weeks. So eventually you are going to see what's featured in this video. But in the meantime, you can always um, do a search on your favorite search engine and, and just look around. I would like to take a brief look at the evolution of the, the Velomobile. It all started out in the post-World War II era, and this is one example of it from Sweden, 1944. And it was invented in Europe because the Europeans just had such poverty and uh, lack of fuel. Fuel was very expensive. There is one in from the 1930, I, 30s. I didn't even realize they existed that long. And I know that the French definitely designed some of the earliest models. This is, by the way, the time when the Vespa came out. I think it came out in the late 40s. But that was different thinking, and the Velomobile was fully weather protected. Now, this one was, this is probably the most notable one. It's a Dutch trike and it was actually made of metal this was full aluminum and the original idea was as the name suggests all weather so the idea was to create a, a bike or a trike that people could enjoy in the winter and they have a harsh winter in the north in the netherlands in germany and scandinavia and so on and so this was a start but they discovered that this kind of a housing as heavy as it is it's the average velomobile today weighs about 50 pounds but it's not not just that it protects you from the the harsh weather in the winter but it makes the ride a lot more aerodynamic and as it turns out air resistance is about as important as the weight if not more so and then there have been a number of other designs i'm not going to review every one of them in this in this video because this is a huge topic the velomobile is a very small market even in europe it's a relatively small market in the u.s it's almost non-existent although there are some people who are posting videos and i know it exists in in many states but you hardly ever see them nevertheless i'm there are so many models that i cannot cover all of them I should just mention that this is a, a small market, it's very competitive, and most of what's on the market is actually very good quality. Almost all of these rides are hand-built. A lot of them are made in northern European countries, and the, the quality is really good. And because the aerodynamic aspect is so important, most of them are also well-designed and very attractive-looking. Now here's an interesting video. This is an old video. It's been online for quite some time. This is somebody who lives in New Jersey. And he has the regular cars. He has a family. He has a van. But he bought this Mango Velomobile, a beautiful ride, that he uses just to go to work. And the price of this, I'll show you on, on the page, is not cheap. Although it's one of the cheaper Velomobiles, actually. But because you don't have to spend any money on insurance, there's no fuel, it eventually saves back on the money you're not spending driving your car. And ultimately, it's a free ride at the end of the day. And here he is riding around in New Jersey, which would be a risky thing to do in New York City. I don't think I would dare to get, a, to get on the main road with the car but he says he has said no problems the people are very polite so this is the mango that he's riding 
let's see let's see what we're looking at it's one of the more affordable and one of the cheaper velos and I wish I could find the weight of it I think it's around here it is it's a little over uh, well it's under eight thousand dollars let's put it that way I don't think they have a distributor in the US so if you wanted to order one you would have to take you would have to pay for the shipping and you would have to pay a tariff as well when it comes into the US but you would not have to pay any taxes for the Europeans this is a Dutch bike I would like to see the weight but not not on this one they typically weigh around around 50 pounds some of them are heavier and there are a few of them that, that are a little bit lighter but you cannot go far below the 50 pound mark this is Liba this is one of my favorites the reason this company is so interesting is because they make a two-person velomobile the one you see here and they make a sport velomobile and they also add electric propulsion to some of the models if you pay an extra something like two thousand dollars I mean let if even look at the, the bottom basement this is the start of the cheapest velo that they offer and it is interesting because you s this is an upright velo mobile so it's very visible and it's very easy to navigate in an urban environment so if I had to choose a velo to run around in Manhattan this would probably be the one and look at how cheap it is six thousand dollars is roughly the price of a titanium Brompton which gives you no weather protection and none of the speed that you can get out of something like this very neat very smooth very aerodynamic you have a huge windshield in the front you can see very clearly and I really like the color matched wheel cover and they have a two-person version of the same bike a second person can squeeze in here or you can use this as a shopping bike and you can you can shop a generous amount you can cram in a generous amount of food or groceries whatever you are shopping for I would like to see the weight of this hmm the price is very affordable under 8,000 and it's essentially a tandem for two people I think that's very reasonable but the weight is going to be definitely more than 50 pounds a bike like this is probably going to be around 75 to 80 pounds without anybody in it and I would probably add an electric motor as well so they say that without the motor you get about a hundred pounds if you add the motor it's going to go up to more like 110 so that's how heavy it is it is really heavy but then it's for two people now because it's so heavy I, I think you just need an electric support system and then they have both hybrid as well as just mechanical bikes that are built for speed these are much more aerodynamic and more narrow a beautiful bikes I think I love the Ferrari red it looks like a water drop really neat and I don't think the price is gonna go up that far it's not gonna be over 10k look at this sixty two hundred dollars for a sports velomobile not bad at all for what you're getting not bad at all unfortunately because of because of the size and the weight of these things it's next to impossible to get them into an apartment so you most likely would have to have a garage or you would have to rent 
a parking spot. You might be able to get away with the outdoor parking, but th this vehicle is kind of fragile, so I probably would prefer a garage. And that's a draw. That's kind of a drawback over a regular bike or a recumbent that you can drag into an elevator. This one is not probably not going to come into an elevator. And th these are their fastest models. I think they are beautiful. Very smooth, very fluid design. Especially if you have a wheel cover. I think that's necessarily a part of this. But the price is going to be higher as well. 6500 is actually very affordable. That is very affordable. 6500 Wow. And the weight is just a little over 50 pounds. That's actually a good deal. So this is Liba, a company that is just so versatile. They make so many things and they make them very affordably. I think partly the reason is that they were one of the earliest of the Velomobile producers that are still on the market. And so they have a well-developed following. If you want comfort, there is the Quattro Velo. This is not a trike, this is a quadricycle. You, s you can see that there are two wheels in the rear. And this one also has a generous amount of storage in the rear and enough space for even a child to sit in there. This is more expensive than the Libas, definitely. It's a fairly new design. A lot of expensive carbon fiber in it. It's not just aluminum and plastic. And it was built mostly for comfort. It's built, the, the seat itself is more comfortable than what's usual. And really the idea is to provide maximum protection from the elements and enough luggage to take this thing for a two week trip if you want to. People have ridden these things down from Scandinavia to the Mediterranean. And even in fact, they regularly have tours to do it. Obviously, this has a price. This is more like eleven thousand dollars, even with the basic configuration. They say the weight runs from around sixty to seventy pounds, so it's a little bit heavier as well but not outrageously so. I think the cheap price of the LIBA comes partly from the fact that it's mostly just plastic, whereas the, the, these, these bikes are often full of carbon fiber as well, which is a whole lot more expensive. And then if you want speed, there is the there are two of them that I'm going to show you. One of them is the Snoke. I think this is a, a Scandinavian Velomobile. Here they are riding it in London something I would not dare to do in New York. And look, even in the European market, this is fairly unusual. So you see people taking uh, photographs and filming it. Fairly unusual, even in, even in the European market. So these are a little bit, they are not very light, so they are about 50 pounds. But I'm going to show you why they are so much faster. I need to see. Okay, let me come. So there are there are two main reasons. Number one, there is no wheel cutout because of this wheel cover. A single single element, a single panel covers all of the wheels on all sides. You don't have the kind of turbulence that that's created by the wheel well, and that's one of the the things that modern sports cars are so bad about. They because of fashion, they don't want to risk uh, creating a Porsche or a Ferrari that has a covered wheel. Uh, even though I think, depending on how it's designed, it could be done in a beautiful way. The second thing that they do is this indent in the center. This lowers uh, the profile of the vehicle 
while still allowing you to pedal on the sides it still has to be high because your knees are going up and down up and down here so they can only do a cutout in the center but these two aerodynamic elements make all the difference and these valves can go they can go really fast and I'm going to show you just how fast this thing can go this speed 50 kilometers an hour is already around 30 miles an hour and there is no gradient this is not a downhill he's going on the flat and look at how fast he's moving on to regular upright bicycles that look like they are not even moving and some of these are just chopping bikes but if you watch the full video if if you do a search you can f find plenty of races against the road bikes I'm going to show you even more speed. Check this out. 70 kilometers an hour on the flats. That's like 45 miles an hour. That's really an amazing speed to accomplish without anything electric, just pedaling. Of course, there's no way to guarantee that there's no that there's no electric support in it. But I have electric support in my Brompton and I cannot cannot do uh, 65 kilometers an hour. It's just not possible. How much does this cost? How much is this going to set you back to get a speedy velo as Snoke? About 10,000 for basic configuration. I probably would spend another thousand on a variety of upgrades. I think it's very elegant, has a very cool light system front and rear, has directional signals for extra money obviously very cool ride but it costs money eleven thousand dollars it's not so cheap here's another model I think this one is German it does the same thing it's like a faster velomobile they cover all the wheels and there is an indent in the center what allows the website they should fix the navigation so here you can see that there is an indent in the center there is also a crease which which the snow does not have but other than that it's very similar so basically uh, that's what you have to do to go faster there are racing velomobiles that are even faster than this those are not going to be covered in this video but I want to show you one of my favorites this is the American design the light lightning for what it gives you I mean you can't pack much into it but the price is not unreasonable consider that this is a soft shell you can remove the soft shell and fold it this one you can drag up into an apartment even into a walk up if you don't have if you don't have an elevator it's not impossible to take it apart uh, fold this this soft shell element I don't know if the front is removable or not, but the weight is not so horrible that you could not drag it up a floor or two. Now there's this amazing claim that uh, according to lighting they covered they, they covered uh, from LA to New York. They say traveled from Los Angeles to New York in five days. If that's true, here is Los Angeles in New York in five days. That means they covered they covered over three thousand miles, so thirty to eleven in five days. For each day they rode six hundred they covered six hundred forty two miles. Assuming that they rode for sixteen hours and they barely slept less than eight hours and they showered and whatever for 16 hours they would have had to average 40 miles an hour which is astonishing I'm not sure if I'm willing to believe it I would have to to ride one of these bikes to believe it I once drove a car from New York to Miami and I averaged 50 miles an hour in a car and I was driving like crazy doing a hundred miles an hour and even above slightly 
as much as I could. But then when you're on the highway, you cannot take advantage of the, the greenways being separate from all of the red lights, stop signs, and traffic and all of that. So there were segments of slow traffic, which I guess if you're on the bike, you may not have to worry about. So, so this, uh, this route that Google is suggesting may not be, it's probably not a highway or a route. Some of it might be greenways, so it might be a little easier to move around than to be on, on public roads all the time. So this is it for the current video. I'm going to do more videos on the velomobiles because this is just such a massive topic to cover. And uh, I'll be back next, next time.